Five years ago, I set out on the most epic adventure of my life, riding a bike to the South Pole. This is my story. Last week, I battled with whiteout conditions, arrived at my first food cache, and found what kind of looked like a penguin. And so one of the things I did to prepare for this expedition was I would try to imagine in my mind all the things that could possibly go wrong and if that did go wrong, what would I do to try to solve that problem? Okay, well, big bit of fast here. So I thought I'd uh, get a little bit. And one of the things I was warned about is that ice crystals get into everything and can cause all kinds of mechanical failures. So one of the problems I considered was if that if those ice crystals got into my rear hub, it could mess up my rear hub. December 21st, I suffered my first mechanical at about five miles into the ride. The rear hub seized up to where I could pedal, and it would pedal just fine, but I couldn't stop pedaling and coast. And so the, pro the thing was, is I was biking uphill into a headwind in the snow, and so coasting was not an issue, really. I, I, there was no coasting. One of the things that really helped me get ready for Antarctica was the guys I was riding with, they were really into climbing steep, technical, hard climbs. And one of the challenges was you're on a really steep climb, and how do you get started going up this, up this hill? It just required a lot of technical skill and being able to have your pedals exactly right to do that. Without the ability to uh, coast, I could no longer adjust where the pedals were for starting. I could still do it by lifting the, the rear wheel and pedaling to the right spot and then getting, getting started. So it was still possible, but it was much more difficult. But one of the really cool things about the hub that I had, I could take it apart and service it without using any tools. I uh, took the rear hub apart, and it turned out that the metal had gotten too brittle, and, and it had uh, broken off the part that holds the pole in place. So it was all jammed together to where it wouldn't coast anymore. So it was a pretty easy fix. I, I pulled out the broken pieces, cleaned it out, and put it all back together. So eventually I figured all those poles would end up breaking. Before I left on my expedition, I had originally planned on taking Sundays as kind of an easy rest day, not, not working too hard, but continuing moving forward. But it turns out that there was no such thing as easy in Antarctica. And so I had to come up with a different idea. And so my new idea was on Saturdays, I would do my normal amount of biking, and then I would set up my tent, eat, uh, eat dinner, and then I would go again for another half a day's worth of riding and get an extra half day riding in on Saturday. And then on Sunday, I would be able to rest and sleep and, and just recover on Sunday. And then Monday morning, I would wake up real early, get an extra half day of riding in and then uh, continuing on later in, in the day so that I'd get a day and a half worth of riding again on Monday. Okay, so December 22nd was Sunday. It was, it was actually a beautiful day, uh, nice and sunny, no wind. It would have been a perfect day to get lots of miles in, but I had already decided that I was going to take Sundays off and, and make those rest days. It turned out that I think, I'm not sure, but I think every Sunday after that for the rest of the expedition, they were all beautiful days that would have been good travel days, but I... I uh, had committed to myself that I was going to take those as rest days, and I did. And so, <laughs> kind of funny how that worked out. The the Sundays where I I decided to ride anyway were miserable days, and the Sundays where I decided not to would have been great days to travel. Maybe it was just a, a way of testing if I would really stay true to my idea of, of taking Sundays as a rest day. On December twenty third, ended up being a really good day. It was Monday morning. I started really early. I didn't write down what time I started, but it was probably you know like three four o'clock in the morning. And the thing was, while I was in Antarctica. It was always daytime, and so it didn't matter if I rode at 1 o'clock in the morning, 11 o'clock at night. It didn't matter what time I rode. The sun was always up, and so I could ride any time of the day. So that meant you know, starting at 4 o'clock in the morning really wasn't a problem since I'd slept all day Sunday and, and taken a really good rest day on Sunday. My plan for Monday was that I would get 24 miles in. I was able to get the first eight miles in about an hour faster than I had planned on. But the problem was is I was working too hard and I, I got really sweaty and so my clothes were pretty wet. Most of the time I wasn't cold because when I was outside I was working hard and then when I'd get in my tent, the tent would warm up from the sun. But this, at this point I was so wet and I was trying to dry everything out, I was getting pretty cold. So when it came time to get going again, 
I was still kind of damp and wet, but in order to get the distance in, I had to start anyway. But then as I started, started going again, the wind picked up, and that wind blowing through my clothes um, would help dry out that, and so I was able to actually dry out a little bit better on the last part of the day. At this point, I, I discovered that what I had to do every day about an hour before I was going to quit for the day, I'd have to get off the bike and and instead of riding the bike, push the bike. But by getting off the bike and pushing it instead of riding it, then I didn't have to work quite a, quite as hard so I would be able to quit sweating. And then with the wind blowing and the sun and everything, then I could dry out and I could have things dry enough when I set up the tent. Then I would be able to set out all my clothes, and while I was sleeping, the sun would be able to uh, continue to uh, dry those things out. December 24th, Christmas Eve. I'm all alone in a sea of white. There's snow everywhere, but it didn't feel like Christmas. I'd never been away from home for Christmas before. I'd always been able to be with my family, and so this was kind of a... Uh, a strange Christmas for me. Being out in that uh, white, at times it was just so hard. It looked like the edge of the world was just a few feet off in any direction, and I could imagine to myself that I would just go up to the edge of the earth there, take my bike and everything, and just chuck it over the edge. But of course the horizon just continues on forever, and I could just keep going and going and going and, and never get to that horizon. Well, today's actually really good conditions for riding. I am just kind of beat from working so hard for so many days. I just don't have it in me to ride today. I gotta keep going anyway, cause uh, I gotta I gotta get uh, to the end. So. That's, uh, that's a 360 degree view of uh, what I have. Nothing but wide, as you can see, there's my bike. I am just beat tired. I was able to get another 16 nautical miles in, which was, which was my goal. And so that evening when I called in to ALE to report my condition and, and my position, they told me that uh, I was getting a, a special Chris Christmas present. Borealis, who had donated my bike frame, was working with ALE to be able to get a new wheel to me. December 25th, Christmas. This was the worst Christmas of my life. I was alone, it was windy, it was cold, and... But one of the really cool things was my, my daughter was on a mission in Croatia. We get to talk to her on... Christmas Day and on Mother's Day. And so one of the cool things um, that I was able to do on Christmas Day was was I used the satellite phone and I called my daughter in Croatia and it was really cool to be able to, to talk to her. So, so that made, uh, made a, the Christmas Day a little bit better. But still, it was a very lonely and a very emotional day for me. Um, I was still able to get, it looks like I got 14.6 miles in on Christmas Day. To where I was uh, at 84 and a quarter degrees south and so I figured it was a good number to uh, quit at and so I actually uh, quit right at 84 degrees and 15 minutes south. When I was at the base camp at Union Glacier on the bulletin board they had this picture of the elevation profile for my expedition. And so I took a picture of that with my iPad and then throughout my expedition I would take and I'd pull up that picture and I'd look at it and I was able to look and say okay I'm doing this climb I'm going on the, and so I was able to kind of see what was coming ahead of me. So you can see in the profile that uh, somewhere before the halfway there was a pretty good downhill and I kept wondering when I was going to hit this downhill and that starting to think that maybe the, maybe I'd already passed the downhill and it wasn't as much of a downhill as I thought and and with that headwind and the snow a lot of times when I was going downhill it actually felt like I was going uphill so I was kind of thinking I'd, I'd missed out and that 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 downhill would never really happen but on December 26th I actually hit the downhill and and I was actually going I was I was going really fast I was making great speed and I thought man this is going to be the day I'm going to be able to get 30 miles in and then I saw the first person I had seen since 
the very beginning of my expedition. Well, actually, all, all I saw was, was their army outside the windows. They were in an Arctic truck, and they were driving back from the South Pole back to the base camp at Union Glacier. And as they flew by, they, they stuck their arm out the window and waved at me. And then as it continued, and, and then they continued on to the north. The problem was that I'd been following in the route that everybody else had been using that was giving me a bit of a packed surface that made it easier to ride the bike. But the truck was also using that same path. And, and so it, when it went through, it ground up all that packed ice and, and left it all pulverized and soft. And so now if I rode in the tracks where the truck had gone, it was pretty soft from being fresh from the truck going through there. But if I got out of where the truck had gone into into just the snow where nobody had gone, that again was a little bit too soft and it was it was hard to move. So I, I kind of had I kind of played back and forth between riding in the tracks and riding out, and it just it really slowed everything down. And I only ended up getting 18 miles for the day. December 27th started out really well. The snow had hardened back up. I was able to make pretty good time. And so since I was going really well and I was kind of ahead of schedule, my schedule for the day on how many miles I was getting going, I decided to get a little bit of video of me riding my bike. So I thought I would uh, play around with the camera a bit today. Let me try. I'll put it on the sled and get a little bit of... Uh, view of what it's like riding. After I'd set up the camera and started riding, the skewer um, stripped on my rear wheel, and when that happened, the chain ended up getting stuck between the spokes and the gears and got all jammed up. So I spent quite a bit of time <laughs> getting that unjammed and being able to get going again. I could no longer put the mounts I was using to pull my sleds. I could no longer put that on the rear wheel, so I had to take that off. And that meant I had to come up with a different way to try to pull my sleds. There was another guy who called himself Juan Sin Medio, or something, something to that effect, which is basically John without fear. I, while I had been pulling my sleds by tying them to my bike, Juan was pulling the sleds kind of like when he was, if he was skiing, using that same method. He just had the, the sleds attached to him, and then he would try to ride the bike. So I decided to try, try that. really didn't work. It was really a terrible way to try to pull the sleds. So as you're trying to ride, the slow sleds would be pulling on you. It made it pretty almost impossible to ride the bike. And so that explains why one had pretty much, he'd given up riding his bike and was, uh, was skiing the whole way. I also tried attaching the sleds to the rack, and, and that seemed to work pretty well, but I was really worried that that rack was designed to be pulling, be pulling that much weight behind me, and I was pretty sure it would end, end up eventually breaking the rack, so I didn't like that idea. And so I tried uh, putting the rope around the seat post and pulling it with the seat post, and that also worked, but it was a carbon seat post and the extra stress on the seat post and also the way that that would put stress on the down tube on my bike. I was worried that it could end up breaking my bike frame or my seat post. <laughs> and so what looked like it was going to be a great day and I was kept trying to be able to break this 30 miles in a day and it looked like it was going to be a day I would easily be able to do that. I decided to, to uh, go with the seat post at least for, for, for the time. So I was pulling along and that, that was working pretty well. And then my uh, the rear wheel the rear hub started slipping, so I, I would pedal and, and I would just get a lot of slipping and, and wasn't going forward very well anymore. So at this point, I knew what was going on inside of my hub and and uh, decided that the best thing to do is not to take it apart again, but to uh, wire it together. Okay. Well, battery's about dead. I've gone from bad to worse. My uh, free hub. It's been having problems. It uh, quit working a, a while ago. It's become 
like a fixie and now it's not uh, it's skipping all the time and I'm not able to uh, pedal so I've taken some uh, derailleur wire and wound it through the spokes and the cassette so that I can uh, go ahead and uh, continue biking so see how that goes uh, not, not been a good day I had brought some brake cable and, and shifting cable so I took that uh, cable and I wrapped the cable in and around the spokes and and the cassette and wired the cassette to the spokes and that made it so that I was able to continue biking and, and so I ended up uh, what could have been a great day ended up being an okay day. I, I got 16.8 miles in which was more than enough to uh, to be successful but kind of disappointing that I didn't get the 30 miles in I was hoping to get. A lot of times when I was getting ready to finish for the day I would look at my uh, where I was on latitude and I'd always try to end on uh, interesting numbers for latitude sometimes um, repeating numbers or or different things and and this day I actually stopped at it says I stopped at 84 degrees south 49.00 minutes at the first I wasn't riding straight south it actually meant at this point I was more than halfway done with the expedition and it turned out I was also about halfway done with the amount of time I had available to be able to get to the South Pole before the last plane left. Next week I make it to Phil's Corner where they refuel planes that are flying to the South Pole. And I continue to experience problems with my rear wheel and coming up with solutions to make it keep working.